The second question is to graph and analyze polynomial functions. The starting questions are very simple. All you need to know is what's the degree and the leading coefficient. Degree is for a variable. That's the power. See, this is a degree. If you have no power, there's a variable n over here. Or imagine it's just x. There's no power. That means it's 1. Over here in the first thing, the degree is 1. What is the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient means, imagine you have a term like this, x power 3 plus 2x squared minus 3x. You should see what is the highest degree. It's 3, right? What is the number beside it, the coefficient of the highest degree? Over here, there is nothing. That means it's 1. So the leading coefficient is 1. Over here, you can see the leading. Okay, this we will come to it in a minute because we have to multiply this and then solve it up. Now, imagine you had 4x to the power 4 over here minus this much. And then now the leading coefficient would be 4. If it was minus 4, it will be minus 4 and so on. So it's very simple. Now, this one over here, the degree is 1 and the leading coefficient is also 1. What about this over here? You need to simplify first. You need to start multiplying by FOIL method. That would mean it will be, see now this multiplication, you have to do it by writing. There is no other way. So it will be 8, 4 times 2 is, 2 times 4 is 8, x to the power 3. And now, see, you can stop here if you want because they only want the degree and the leading coefficient. Now if you continue further, no matter what, it won't be more than or equal to x power 3. Why? Because there is only one multiplication over here that will give you the highest degree. Now, if you multiply over here, it is just x. This and, see, this and this, it will just be x squared and this and this will be just a number. So, you can stop. Only this is enough. Here, the degree is 3 and the leading coefficient is 8. That's the answer. See, the leading coefficient will be 8 and degree is 3. No matter what, the other terms will not be higher than the first one. So that's why you can stop just over there and write the answer. Because the options will be there, you have to just select the correct answer, right? Degree 3 and leading coefficient 8. Same way over here, you can see the degree is 5 and the leading coefficient is minus 5. What about this one over here? The degree is 6 and 7. Uh, yeah, leading coefficient is 7, the degree is 6. Now, this, they, what they have done is they have just rearranged and written with the highest degree starting at the first. This is not required. You can just see the highest degree and write it. Now, what about these? See, the degree over here is 4 and even over here it is 4 actually because 2 plus 2 is 4, right? But since we are dealing with one variable, it's clearly mentioned it's one variable. Now, this is not a one variable. There are two separate variables. So, no, this is not a polynomial in one variable. So, that's it. Here you can see there is divided by 1 divided by r squared. That means r to the power minus 2, right? This is not a polynomial. If it was, say, square root, no. r to the power 1 by 3, no. All these are not considered over here, okay? So only if the powers are 1, 2, 3, and uh, integer, positive integers, only they are considered. So this is not a polynomial because there's a negative power here. Now we have a real world problem. Dylan drew n dots on a piece of paper, making sure that no set of three points were collinear. The number of triangles can be made out by using the dots as the vertices is equal to this function over here, where n is greater than or equal to zero. If Dylan drew 15 dots, how many triangles can be made? Now here this n means number of dots, right? So you've got 15 dots, just substitute n. So you can see how much, uh, you know, triangles can be made. Just substitute over here and solve it up. Look over here, instead of n, you're substituting 15 because they asked for 15. The answer is 455. How do you sketch? You can just put this in the calculator, I'll show you now. All you need to do is mode and then press seven and type this equation as it is. It's one by six multiplied by n is not there, we write it as x to the power 3 and then we have minus 3x squared and lastly we have plus 2 times n 
So it's this and this over here and press equal to. There is no another function. You may not have this option as well. Directly jump to the start. Now we will start at say zero because they have told it's greater than or equal to zero. And let's say, I think so, five or seven is enough to plot. And step, let's give one. And you can see these are the values. For zero, it's zero, one, it's zero. And over here now the values are changing. You can see that's the table. Over here you can see these are the answers. We got more values, but that's fine. With these, with this table, which can be easily obtained from the calculator, graph it out. 0 is 0, 1 is 0, 2 is 0. What about 3? It's 1. 4, you can see it's 4. And what about 5? It's 10. And it increases. So this is the rough sketch. But see, you don't have to sketch it. There will be options. So just graph it out in the calculator and match the correct graph. Eliminate the others. Similarly, there's another problem. The volume of a drill bit can be estimated by the formula for a cone. This is the given. V is equal to one third pi h r squared, where h is the height of the bit and r is the radius. Substituting root 3 by 3 r for h, the volume of the drill bit can be estimated over here. Now, instead of the height, they have substituted this value here and you got the new equation. What is the volume of the drill bit with the radius 3 cm? Just you substitute the r as 3 and solve for the volume. Then you need to sketch the graph just like what we did a while ago. Over here, put it in the calculator and graph it out. Take some values, say 0 to 5 or 0 to 7 or something, and then graph it out. And the last type of problems here, use the graph, state the number of real zeros of the function. What are real zeros? Real zeros means if a graph touches the x-axis, see this is zeros. Now over here, you know parabola, right? You have an equation of parabola like this, imagine. This has roots, but they are imaginary because it doesn't touch the x-axis, it will be imaginary roots. It will be plus or minus something like this. So this is not touching the x-axis, but if it touches the x-axis, these are the roots. These are not imaginary roots, they are real roots. Now here we have one root, over here there are four, over here one to three roots, that's it. So the answer is three, four, and one, four and three, very straightforward. Over here there are two roots, two real roots, and there can be imaginary as well. And there are three roots over here, and lastly over here three roots. Now this is the last problem. They have told to examine this particular function, and another function, g of x, is given over here in the graph which is having greater maximum. Now what you need to do is put this equation in the calculator mode 7 and you will plot the points. Get some you know values and plot it out. This is the graph. Now relative maximum means this maximum point. Can you see? Here it's about 1. Here you can see 1, 2, 2 and half I guess. See the first answer. f of x is having a relative maximum of 2.5 whereas g of x is only having 1. So which is having maximum, relative maximum? This one f of x function. Next one, compare the zeros. Where is the zero? One, two, three zeros. These are the three that is at say minus 1.5, 0 0.5 or 0 0.25 I guess. And then over here one, two, three point something. Whereas over here, where are the zeros? At 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 something like that near there. So over here they have the exact values. Now you can use your calculator as well to find the answers, I'll show you. If you have been given the equation like this, you can just go to mode, equation and this is option number 4 and type the coefficients. Before x cube it's 1, minus 2, minus 4 and lastly 1. And then what you do is see over here, these are the x values for this graph. Now here it's already given, you can see them from the graph and write it out, x intercepts. Y intercept is the y axis. Where does the graph touch the y axis? At this one. What about this? Over here also it's one only. And end behavior, what's happening? Left side is going downwards, right side is upwards, over here it's the other way around. So this is just the comparison, basic comparison, that's it. So that's about it and that is the end of the question too. Just remember mode 7 gives you the calculator graphing uh, table. So please use the calculator easily, compare the options and easily eliminate the wrong options and you can solve them up.